The following are true scary stories from the subreddit, Let's Not Meet. I'll have a link in the description below. If you enjoy this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more. Let's begin. It was the summer before my senior year in college. My little brother, always interested in military stuff, had gotten a pair of night vision goggles for his birthday and he left them at my apartment. One night I was bored and decided to go try out the goggles at a wooded hiking area slash nature preserve nearby. In retrospect, this seems like a very stupid idea since I was all by myself and female. But I was young and stupid and I got myself all excited at the possibility of seeing deer and other woodland creatures in their natural nighttime habitat. I was familiar with these woods. My best friend and I had hiked there at night before and we'd never run into anyone else. Our area is mostly rural and pretty safe, so I didn't anticipate any trouble. I parked in the little sparsely lit parking lot, ignored the sign, park closed at 10, and entered the woods, night vision goggles in hand. It was a half moon night that night, and that was the only light that filtered down through the canopy of the trees. It was pretty dark, and I didn't want to put on the goggles until I'd found a place to sit down. So I lit my way with the mini mag light on my keychain. A couple of times, I thought I heard a little rustling in the woods a fair distance away, but it was nothing out of the ordinary, and I put it down to animal activity. Hopefully the deer I'd come to see. After I'd hiked a fair distance, I found a fallen log to sit on and put on the goggles. I don't know if you've ever used night vision goggles before, but the effect is impressive. They can turn near pitch darkness into bright as day. Everything appears in a shade of green, but quite bright and clear. For a while I had a blast looking around from my fallen log vantage point. Some chipmunks played in the leaves nearby. A big owl blinked its lamp-like eyes at me from the tree branch. No deer though. I started to think that maybe they wouldn't be likely to come anywhere near me, darkness or no, if I sat right in the open on a log. So I decided to find a place where I could be a little more hidden. I made my way a little deeper into the woods, and finally found a huge tree, perfect for climbing. I've always loved climbing trees, so it was nothing for me to hoist myself up a few branches and settle in and wait for my deer. I didn't get to see any. What I did see lit up in the bright night vision green above my 10 minutes of waiting, about my 10 minutes of waiting, was this. A man dressed head to toe in dark colored clothing, making his way stealthily through the woods. He was coming from the same direction I'd come from and clearly trying to stay hidden, moving from tree to tree and glancing around carefully before moving again. It looked very much as if he was looking for someone. It took me a few moments to notice that he was carrying something, and when I saw what that was, the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. He had a knife, a big one, and he was gripping it as if he expected to use it in the very near future. It wasn't deer hunting season, and this was a nature preser preserve where hunting of any kind is prohibited. And at any rate, this guy was alone and not dressed like a hunter. There were no deer in sight, and very few hunters kill their prey with knives. I was suddenly horribly aware of my situation. A young woman, alone, weaponless, in the middle of the woods at night. This was the 90s, so no cell phones, and even if I'd had one, I wouldn't have felt safe using it it, it less draw his attention. I didn't know how he was able to see so well in the darkness. I guess his eyes had adjusted, and I was terrified he would look up and see me. I sat there, afraid to move, afraid to breathe, and watched him as he continued his methodical and stealthy process of scanning the forest for who or whatever the hell he was stalking. I scanned around but couldn't see anyone else, even from my high vantage point, and the sickening thought struck me that he might be looking for me. I remembered the rustling noises I'd heard in the woods when I first arrived, and then I thought back farther and remembered something else. A white car that had fallen too close behind me for most of the drive to the nat nature preserve. I'd been annoyed a little and freaked out at the time, but when I turned into the nature preserve parking area, the white car had passed me and driven on its way. I hadn't thought anything more of it. Now I wondered, horrified, if this was the driver of that car. If he'd circled back and seen my parked car, alone in the lot. If he'd come in after me. I sat, paralyzed with fear, and watched the man for what felt like forever, but was probably another half hour or so. There was a heart-stopping moment when he paused right under my tree and I was sure he was going to look up and find me, but he didn't. After a while, he seemed to give up whatever he planned in mind, whatever plan he had in mind. I heard him say, fuck it, 
and he started heading back in the direction he'd come, the direction of the parking area. I stayed in the tree, wet with sweat and crying, until the sun came up a few hours later. Then I climbed down, and still terrified, gripped the little can of pepper spray on my keychain. I made my way as fast as I could to the parking lot. The, mad ha- the man had been there. My windshield had been smashed with a rock, and someone had scraped all down the sides of my car with something sharp. Presumably, a giant knife. That I'm lucky and it didn't end up in my chest. Thank God for the night vision goggles that let me see him before he, he could see me. And thank God for the big trees with sturdy branches. Creepy forest rapist, let's never meet again. I live alone out in the country with my two Caucasian shepherds, Dangzig and Ripley. Caucasian shepherds are notoriously known as the best guard dog breeds in the world, and when you live out in the country where the nearest neighbor is miles away, they're your best security system. One evening, it was around 11, and Danzig and Ripley were monitoring the house. I was watching an older slasher flick that was on some channel I'd never heard of. I began to feel pretty tired and decided to go to bed. Suddenly, I woke up to the sound of Danzig and Ripley barking uncontrollably. I looked at the clock at my, on my nightstand. 3.34 in the morning. I walked into the living room where Danzig and Ripley were, still barking. They were facing the front door, and I decided to open it. Most of the time, when they had woken me with their howls, it was because there was some sort of animal outside. Outside, I saw nothing, just an empty field of grass. I sighed in an annoying manner and marched back to the warm comforts of my bed. Danzig and Ripley were now just quietly growling. Whatever animal was out there, it wasn't there anymore. The next morning, I got up and put Danzig and Ripley on a leash. We walked through the grass field and into the woods. In the woods, there was a large path next to a small creek. As I was walking, I saw a figure hidden amongst the trees. It had a human shape. I wondered if it was just a lost person who was searching for help. Hello, I called out. The figure didn't move. Are you lost? The thing began to move through the trees until it was about a couple feet away. I saw a heavily bearded man. He was wearing a baggy hoodie that had many holes. The hoodie concealed his eyes. I said once again in a more quiet way, Are you lost? The man spoke, I'm fine. His voice raspy as he had little teeth left. Those that still remained were yellow and cavity filled. He kept standing there a couple of feet away. I knew he wouldn't come close. Not when I had two large growling dogs on my side. The man was creepy, but I wasn't intimidated or anxious. I said bye and continued my walk. By the time I returned to the spot where I spoke to the man, he was nowhere in sight. I didn't think much of it and returned home. I stayed there until night playing killing floor on my PC. Eventually, I grew tired and went to bed. Again, I woke up to the sounds of my dogs barking at the door. I walked into the living room and opened the door. As soon as I opened it, I saw a piece of paper on the ground. It was folded in half and I could faintly see text through it. I picked it up and opened it. It was written in red ink and read, I like your house. I immediately thought, what the fuck? And closed the door. I didn't sleep that night. The next morning I took Danzig and Ripley on their usual walk, didn't spot the hooded creep, and thought nothing of it. When I returned to my house, a window had been broken. I rushed into my house with my dogs who were starting to go crazy. They started barking at the closet in the hall where I kept my supplies. I opened it and there stood the- and I saw the hooded man hunched over holding a kitchen knife. Before he could even move, my dogs pounced on him. He dropped the knife and was laying on the floor where my dogs were holding him down. I contacted the authorities, and the man was arrested. It turns out the man was an ex-convict that had been in jail for heroin possession. He was sent to prison, but I still haven't completely gotten over it. Every time my dogs bark and growl, my heart drops. So creepy ex-con who hid in my closet. I hope we never meet again. I live in the south of the U.S., And what I mean by South, I mean Redneck Territory. If you've ever heard of the food Livermush, then you'll get a specific picture of the area I live in. If you've never heard of it, then don't worry. The food is mainly in the South, kind of like grits. My mom works in a doctor's office, dealing with medical records in another county. Sometimes I go to her office and sit with her if I have a doctor's appointment, or to go to work with her when I'm wanting to meet up with friends who live in that county, or hang out at their place. Around four years ago, My friend Betsy, who lives in the county my mom works in, asked me to hang out. I rode with my mom to work 
to wait on my friend and sit with my mom until then. I decided to go outside for some fresh air and walk around a little when a red truck pulls up and stops in front of me. I thought maybe he wanted directions, as people often do in this county, so I walked up a little bit, not too close, to the passenger window and asked him what he needed. As I'm walking up to the passenger window, I take in the physical characteristics of the man in the driver's seat. He looks to be in his 50s, short white hair, scruffy beard, and a beer belly. He looks normal enough to, enough for men around his age in the area, so I didn't really think much of it. Before I can ask what he needs, he asks me if I need a ride. After telling him no, that I'm waiting on a friend to come pick me up, he proceeds to tell me that he can take me somewhere if I need it. I back up a little, look at my phone as if I just got a text message, and I tell him that my friend will be there here in a few minutes. About five minutes later, as I'm trying to calm myself down, he pulls back up. He then tells me that he has a job for me and it pays a lot of money. He said that I, t I look old enough for the job and I can use the money to buy me a lot of clothes and make up on other teenager girls. I tell him no thanks and pr practically run into the building. I look out the window and the red truck is still there. I run to the back of the office and tell my mom everything that happened. She follows me to the window so I can show her the truck, but it has already sped off. By this time, her co-workers are calling the police and asking me for details of the truck the man is driving. As I'm giving the details, I see my friend pull up in the parking lot. I got out and meet her and tell her what happened. As we're leaving, I spot the red truck. I tell her that's the truck, and she speeds up to pass. The next day, I heard the police caught the guy. It turns out he was wanted as a sex offender and had many counts of molesting and raping young women, including his nieces. I'm thankful that I was smart enough to not get in the truck with him because who knows what would have happened to me. This story is actually a personal one of mine from when I was a child. Uh, I was at my grandma's in Northern California. I was visiting over there and my mom had just shown up and she brought her dog with us and it ended up getting out of my grandma's house. So I ran up the road and there was a hill with a church up at the end of the up at the end of the hill. And we used to play there all the time as kids. I'd go skateboard there. I'd go hunting behind it. So I was really familiar with it. So I ran up there and I was alone. I was a very fast runner as a kid. And I go up there alone calling for the dog. And I don't know, probably three minutes after I get up there, some dude walks out of the house. I can't say specifically what house to this day, but it was one of the houses on the side. And came up and asked what I was doing. Told him I was looking for my dog. And he gave me, hey, your dog's in here type of thing and started taking a lunge towards me. N nothing, you know, crazy lunge, enough to make me to get s step back. And then I s turn around and went to sprint off, and he starts sprinting after me. Thank God I was a fast runner, because I made it all the way back down to my grandma's house, which it, which is probably a quarter mile away. And I didn't see the guy the whole way. I didn't turn around to look the entire time I ran, either. And I've been thinking about it a lot lately. I maybe, maybe saw these scary stories I've been reading and listening to, but I still don't even know if I ever told my mom. And I just hope that some other kid maybe didn't get caught by him. Because obviously, he really wanted something to happen. What it is, I still don't know. And that probably makes it the freakiest part. But I'm glad I don't know. But I wanted to share that with you guys. I hope you enjoyed these stories. Please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And remember, it's always scarier if it's true.